All right, let's get fired right up. We've got a lot of stuff <clears throat> we're going to talk about. Uh, first of all, I'm going to I'm going to make some predictions here on the the top ten worst housing markets uh, this year for the remainder of the year. These are going to be the markets that I'm making a prediction, uh, and I'm, I'm basing this off of some research from Fortune magazine, uh, Forbes magazine, and CNBC. Um, these are looking to be the ten uh, markets that are going to have the biggest price drops this year. Uh, in other words, uh, if a house sold for three hundred thousand at the end of last year, you know these may be two hundred forty thousand this year. These some of these have gone up the fastest. Some have been steady, but for various reasons, these are the towns that I believe are going to take the brunt of price drops the the most and the fastest. Tampa, Florida, uh, Portland, Oregon, Boise, Idaho. We've talked about Boise uh, at nauseum. Denver, Colorado. Indianapolis, Indiana, Grand Rapids, Michigan, uh, Tacoma, Washington, Salt Lake City, Utah, and finally Sacramento, California. Those are going to be the markets, in my opinion, that are going to see the biggest price drop. So if you are in those markets, I'd be especially careful. Um, you know, we're going to watch this little video here coming up uh, by the uh, CEO of Redfin. Uh, but some of these folks have been predicting as much as a 30 to 40% price drop uh, in a very short period of time. Things are changing very fast, very quickly. Uh, nobody's expecting this market to totally reverse as fast as it has done, uh, but it is. So with that, uh, Ashley, are we queued up and are we ready to watch this quick video uh, interview on CNBC by the, the uh, president of Redfin? That's yes, actually. All right, here we go. Sorry, wrong screen. One second. <laughs> <laughs> the, the joys of live TV, everybody. This happens. Your take, what does a balanced market look like? Should it be seen as a positive? Well, at least for home buyers, it is. In America, we worry about the price of gas and bread and everything except housing. When home prices go down, it's calamity. But this will let more people own a home. Rents have been going through the roof. Home prices have been rising at unsustainable levels. I think a return to normalcy where we have three to six months of housing supply is actually a good thing. And are we back to that normalcy or are we getting close? We are, but it's just such a wild ride to get there. So you've got 15 to 25 percent of the homes under contract being canceled in the past month. 62 percent of Boise homes have dropped their price. More than half have done so in Salt Lake City and Denver. So I don't think it's going to be a smooth landing. It's going to be a very bumpy landing. <laughs> Yeah, well, you mentioned three very hot or previously very hot markets. I would assume where price appreciation over the last two years has been substantial. Is that your expectation in other markets? I mean, is it uh, you know to be expected across the board that, and we're looking at them now, that some of these incredibly hot places are simply cooling off, but are ending at a far higher level than they were even a year ago? Absolutely. So the markets that were the hottest have the furthest to fall. If you look at Austin, Texas, I think the compound annual price growth rate is negative 42 percent. That's extrapolating from just one month. So it gives you a wild number. I don't actually expect home prices to fall that much, but it's still a doozy to see that much loss in one month. So for people who are used to the housing market being really stable, a good place to put your money this is a real bumpy ride. Mostly we see this kind of volatility in the stock market, even in the bond market, but not in the housing market. And some of that's attributable to the fact that investors have become so active in the market. It used to be that investors were one tenth of the home sales. Now we're up to one in five. And that activity is falling fast. We've never seen a faster rate of decline in investor activity since Redfin's begun tracking it. Hmm. Yeah, that's a really important point. Um, I want to ask you about your business at Redfin. About a month ago, you announced layoffs, about an 8% yeah. cut, noting at the time that you didn't have enough work for agents and support staff given the current 
market environment, do you think that the size of your employee base is right at this time, given all these factors, or are you considering yes. future downsizing? No. We made a cut based on the data we had about where the market was going. And since then, the market has performed as we expected. It got a little bit worse in the last two or three weeks of June. It got a little bit better coming out of the 4th of July holiday. Some home buyers are responding to the lower prices. And then also we've just had a really effective campaign reminding people that we sell homes for a 1% fee and sell them faster and for more money. Go ahead and cut that. Actually, we're good there. All right. Um, so several things that he has talked about on there that we want to keep in mind. Uh, now, by the way, what he didn't mention, uh, he, he alluded to it. They've let go of a lot of people. A lot of these supporters, uh, support uh, staff in the mortgage and the sales portion of the, the traditional real estate, the realtor business have uh, been uh, shedding employees, uh, been letting a lot of people go just because you know, there's going to be less to do. There's less mortgages being written right now, primarily because there are well, two reasons. Number one, people aren't refinancing uh, at a higher rate. But number two, uh, you know, people who could previously buy a home when interest rates were 3% can't do that when they're 6%. We've talked about this several times over the last few months. Um, it, it's just too hard uh, at a 6%. I saw an article yesterday that said, about 4 million buyers, people who would consider themselves three months ago and would have considered themselves to be a buyer of homes right now are now priced out of the market. That's a big chunk because at any point in time, there's something like 6 million buyers out there. Two thirds of the market has disappeared. Now, what's happened to those 4 million? Are they, have they just given up the dream of home ownership? Absolutely not. Uh, you know, what happens to you, think about this in, in, in a non-real estate context, but what happens to you uh, when there's something you really want and really hope for, and you know, you're praying about it and you really want to make this thing happen. And then all of a sudden you're told you can't, you, you won't, you're not going to get it. Uh, do you lose interest for it? No, you, you dig down, you double down, uh, you try and figure out some other way to do it. What are the other ways to buy a house if you can no longer afford to make those payments? Well, there are several. Uh, the price of the house it has to be lower or you go hunting for a better deal. Well, that's what a lot of buyers are doing right now. They're, whereas maybe they would have gotten a $600,000 house previously. Now they're like, okay, can we live with a $400,000 house? Yes. Uh, can we live a little further away, a little ro more remotely and drive? Bad choice because gas prices are so high, but it's a lifestyle choice. If they're like, yeah, this is a temporary thing, but we'll live in the house for 30 years then maybe they can make that decision to say, yes, I will go ahead and buy, you know, 30 miles away instead of two miles from town uh, and I'll commute. Um, you know, th there's those type of choices. Other choices are things that they may not even be aware of that we can offer them. Uh, as sellers of homes, we can do things like an interest rate buy down for our buyers. Uh, that is where we contribute some money to the, the loan itself that our buyers would bring to us when they're buying a house for cash and then buying, effectively buying down that rate, 6% down to four and a half or something like that. That makes it more palatable. Another way to do it is to offer a lease option uh, with the idea that by the time they execute the option from us, they'll be able to buy the house at a lower interest rate. Because I believe the Fed at some point, uh, it's not going to happen probably the next year, but at some point a year or so out, you know, we'll have been so much damage to the economy as a result of this too late to the party and then too much uh, drinking at the tail end of the party that they're going to have to get sober real quickly. And the way you do that is by lowering interest rates. And I think that'll happen sooner than had been expected a few months ago. I think that's going to happen probably within two years uh, at the latest. Uh, once interest rates drop again, prices of houses will start climbing. In the meantime, we've got a lot of downward movement uh, in prices. So it's going to happen probably faster than we've ever seen it in this market or in this industry. Uh, you know, houses, it may have taken from 2008 to 2014, a house price that dropped from uh, 200 to 120 took six, seven, eight years to get to the bottom. 14 was probably the bottom. Uh, and then it took another eight years to get to 22 where it got to the top again. And so uh, we're gonna see this all happen in two years. 
I think, and then this is my opinion. Uh, you're going to see this loss happen in two years. You're going to see it drop, and then and then people try and put stuff into the market to put wind in the sails to keep it as a, a new base, and then all of a sudden the bottom falls out of that, and it, it stabilizes, and the bottom falls. So um, just be cautious on this stuff. We've got a lot of solutions for these problems. But our solutions, transactional engineering, are not well known out there in the general public at large. 30, 40 years ago, what we do was the, the deal, was de rigueur. It's, it was what everybody looked at. Lease options or rent owns, those were big things, uh, you know, in the 70s and 80s when interest rate was high. A lot of people bought that way. Uh, seller finance, uh, a lot of people bought that way back then. They don't do that today because of the availability of cash, of capital, to buy a house. But it turns out that capital is only useful if it's cheap uh, to most people. Who'd have thunk? But that's how it works. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to come up with a new paradigm. And I believe that as transactional engineers, that is exactly uh, our role. That's what we were put here to do is to help save this market by using some, you know, other uh, creative finance, used to be called creative finance options, we call it transactional engineering. It's the same thing. Uh, you, you have to help these people, besides buying a house, you have to help them on the finance side. And there's a lot of ways to do that. And once again, that's what we teach in this course. Um, and we'll be glad to help you guys on a one-on-one -on -one basis uh, with individual situations. But you know, you, you guys are all, everybody who's listening to this thing, you're in a catbird seat because uh, the, the same old ham and eggers of buying for cash, getting a loan and paying for cash, that's not going to work. Um, and that's all that's going to do is feed that gator that eats away at the home prices and it's going to keep dropping the prices. We have the ability to go in there and profit uh, on a downward market. And that's why for years, way before I've been in this business, which is 20 plus years, uh, for years, that this has been the way that, uh, you know, uh, people in our side of the business make money. And the downward market is when we thrive. So you're there now. Let's take advantage of it. And we're here to help. All right. That is it for news you can use today.